So yes, as you can see, I have gone ahead and made a small version of the Curta calculator. This is a times two scale, so it's twice the size of the original compared to three times for the larger one. And it does work, it's fully functional. I've got a few um, finishing touches yet. I've got to paint the outer cover, fit the decimal point uh, markers, but it does uh, fully function as what it's supposed to turns very nice and freely there's oh, there's pretty much zero resistance to this crank turning it does feel nice to use everything works all the functions work and um, it looks very similar but on a smaller scale to the previous one and it also does now look very like an original Curta calculator what's a bit more challenging to make this unit than it was the larger one um, but we'll have a quick peek inside and I'll just mention some of the uh, finer points and some of the issues I came up against while trying to make this. So looking inside you can see it's very similar to its bigger brother. The only difference is the size of the parts. Now when we start scaling parts down like this we face a whole new set of challenges. I'll just briefly touch on some of those now because they are quite interesting. and. To scale this down, you can't always scale the parts down uniformly. And the reason for that is because as we get smaller, the amount of material we have to take off to finish the part becomes an increasing percentage of the size of the part. So if that doesn't make sense, I'll just try and explain that. If we look at a drive shaft off the larger unit and compare that to the drive shaft off this unit, you can see there is a very big difference in the size. Because we're printing these lying down, we can't reprint really it vertical because it wouldn't really be strong enough, especially on the smaller scale. So these are printed lying down, but it means that they're not perfectly round when we take them out of the printer. So on the larger unit, we start smoothing this down. But by the time we get it down to the size where it fits, when we get it to the size where the gears will start to fit on, um, it's still not perfectly round. Now you could make it bigger, but that would mean a lot more material has to be removed. But this is fine. It's round enough and it's smooth enough to work as you saw in the finished product. But when we get to the smaller scale, we have to get a much finer finish because this amount of roughness just wouldn't allow the calculator to work. But as we start to head towards a better finish, the amount of material we remove becomes an increasing percentage of the size of the part simply because we have to remove the same amount of material irrespective of the size of the part to get to the surface finish that we want. It's not always quite true if we th um, print on a thinner layer for example the amount of material might be less but because we're trying to get a better surface finish then we end up taking about the same amount of material off so it means you've got to start with a, uh, a larger part in the beginning or at least larger in the dimensions we're reducing the part by. So for a lot of the parts, I, instead of scaling by a uniform 66.6% in the X, Y and Z direction, I might, for example, have scaled X and Y at 69.2% and then in the Z direction by 66.6%. And it was just trying to make sure that the finished product um, was the right size and with the right surface texture. So you probably can't see this very well on the camera but the surface finish on this is much smoother than on the uh, larger version. And if we look at some of the other parts, again you probably can't see this very well on the camera but I polished these up so they're almost like glass. It feels like a piece of glass and that's what we have to aim for when we start getting down to this sort of size. So you can see that the overall size of the parts is a lot smaller, surprisingly uh, small compared to the times 3 unit. Also what I decided to do with this unit is rather than painting it, I've painted a few parts where it needed multiple colours, um, for example the top ring where I needed the black and the silver, that is painted. But some of the parts like the crank handle um, the printer I use for this has two nozzles, so as you can see I had red PLA in one, black in the other. So this is not a separate ring like it was on the larger unit, it's actually all one piece. 
and then I've, print, I've uh, polished this up. So it's not painted, this is just polished and as you can see it comes up really nicely. I've done the same thing with the clearing cover so this is polished as well, it's not painted uh, but again comes up uh, very nice. So you can do that with PLA and you can get a very nice surface finish. Other things we're aiming for that are more difficult on a smaller scale is these two parts have to screw together. So trying to get them to screw together when we have what is now quite a fine thread is quite difficult. But you can see it's perfectly possible and it screws together very nicely. Other parts that uh, are quite tricky to deal with we look at the difference in scale, if we look at one of the um, results digit wheels and compare that to the larger version you can see there is a significant difference in the scale. Same with the input wheels, the uh, ones on the smaller version are very much smaller and um, in some ways they're easier to deal with because there's less material to take off when you finish them but obviously dealing with small parts can be a bit tricky. So I have had to resort to um, metal for a few of the components. So the pin that holds the crank on, I've gone to metal. It just wouldn't have been strong enough if I'd used uh, PLA. Uh, but uh, I've also done the same modification I did with the first in that I've um, filed a D or cutout into the end of the shaft. So it's that that drives the calculator rather than the pin. But even so, I've made the uh, pin out of metal, so there wasn't going to be any issues with it shearing off. Another part that I decided to use metal for are the carry pins. That's a little pin you can see sticking out of this wheel. I made them out of um, brass rod. Might have got away with it for the round pins, but for the ones that are half pins, let's try and get hold of this. I don't know if you had to see this on uh, camera, but you can see the end uh, two and a half millimeters is only half uh, of the round pin and the rest I filed away and that would have been just uh, too thin it would have snapped off if I tried uh, 3d printing that um, so they're the only parts I use metal for just this pin and the carry pins some of the other parts that are very small that I 3d printed um, were the clips so this is the clip as I used to hold the gears in place on some of the shafts and it, uh, although it's getting to the limit of what the 3D printer will do with its nozzle size, it did turn out and they worked fairly well. Incidentally, I retained the 0.4mm nozzle size for printing this. I may at some point, I'm not going to do it um, for a while, get other projects to get onto, but at some point I may go for a 0.2mm nozzle and try to do a one to one scale unit. And that will be different challenges again. Some of the other parts that are much smaller, this is the carry lever spring off the unit we made first and the carry lever spring for this small version are of course much smaller. The text, very simple, just scaled that down otherwise fitted it in the same way and then again lacquered the uh, wheels to protect them. And other parts are just small and a bit fiddly to deal with. This is a, a spare a slide, but you can see you can still print them fairly well, even with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. Other parts, spider spring, that sort of thing, are just scaled down versions of the previous one. The outer case, haven't uh, finished this yet, needs rubbing down, and I'll probably polish this up in the same way I did with the clearing cover, and the same with the top outer ring. But uh, other than that, you can see the calculator looks uh, very nice. It's uh, worked out extremely well. Did modify the springs as well. So the springs that operate um, the zero position and the pull. Um, actually put more turns on to make them operate a bit more smoothly. And I also wound them in the other direction. The instructions um, were saying that you wind them anti-clockwise and when you do that, it means they tighten when they're operated. I don't really like using this type of spring in this application in that mode. It doesn't uh, work too well unless you get it exactly right. 
Um, so wound them either way, they expand now when they're operated and that gives a much uh, smoother feeling. And what we end up with is a calculator that turns very freely. So everything works the way it should and it turns even more smoothly than the bigger version. So you can hopefully see it takes almost no force to turn that even without the crank on there. I also had to use a scaled down version of the modified shaft for the reversing lever. Um, I'm not sure what the deal was with the original but it would have been wrong on this one as well if I'd just scaled down the original. Again it would have put the gears in the wrong place so this is a scaled down version of the one I modified and it does work fine. So um, as you can see the calculator looks uh, nice. All the uh, carry levers move very freely. Took a bit of uh, time to get them sorted out on this. It's a lot more uh, critical um, getting them set up and properly aligned than it, than it is on the larger unit. You've got about a millimeter to play with for all the alignment on the large unit. On this unit, you've got about a third of a millimeter to get everything lined up. And if it's not perfect, it's just not going to work. So, as you can see, it's, um, very similar inside to the uh, larger unit, uh, just a lot smaller. So I'll get this reassembled and we'll have a final look at it. So a quick look at the carriage before I finish assembling this. So you can see that all the wheels turn very nice and freely. They have their click stops in position and they turn nice and freely. And the clearing um, lever as well moves with very little force and has the two uh, stop positions as they should be. So I'll get this fitted and we'll see if the calculator actually works. So that's the calculator assembled and you can see it's very much smaller and you can actually now operate it with one hand. It's still twice the size of the original but um, as you can see a lot smaller than the first one I built. So we'll just uh, quickly try it. One thing I forgot to mention is that because the gears need to be so accurately aligned. I've got one job left to do once it's all settled down and been used uh, for a few minutes. Some of the gears, and this, in particular the gears on the last three shafts on the results uh, dial, um, the position of those gears, because they're captive on the shafts with a couple of those small clips, the position of those gears is determined by where the um, top gear is glued onto the shaft. And I haven't glued those on yet because I want to be able to move them once everything's settled in. So these three end digits won't behave properly until I've done that because they'll catch on um, some of the other gears on the step drum. So you can ignore these three for now. And um, we'll give it uh, a quick uh, try and see how well it works. So firstly we'll clear the, um, the dial and the counter. Try and work around the camera here. It's actually a very small gap between the uh, calculator and the camera. I'll try not to hit you. So I'll raise this, rotate this, and it rotates, as you can see, very freely indeed. I've got three sets on the input. These all work, by the way, so these are all set to zero apart from the first one. And it's set on three, so each time we rotate the crank, uh, we should see it increment by three, and the count should go up by one. So we'll rotate this. You see we've got three on the results. Hopefully you can see that and one on the counter. So again, this is very free. It takes almost no effort to turn this and it actually does now feel very like one of the originals. It's, there's no clunkiness, there's no kind of stickiness to it as it rotates. And as you can see, it's working. We've got six on here, two on here. Let's get this lead right the way so you can see what it's doing. So now we've got nine and three, 12 and four, 15, five, we'll do one more, 18 and six. We'll do one more so you can see it carry. And as you can see, 21 and seven. So it's working, it's doing what it's supposed to, just a few small jobs to get this finished off. Um, but hopefully you can see that we can make these uh, smaller. I'll put the big brother alongside and zoom you out so you can get them both in the shot. 
so clearly a nice result still got the case to finish yet um, but it's working fine very pleased with the way it operates I'm very pleased with the way it feels I am glad I made the big one first um, some of the challenges in making the small one would have been much more difficult had I not uh, had the experience of making the larger one um, but now I have a small version and at some point in the future I hope to be able to complete the set and make a full-sized one